many years in the making, so I'm going to try to just give a high level overview of what the Southern Ontario Water Consortium is all about. Give you a taste for it, give you some of the kind of key elements. I thought on a Friday afternoon I'd also focus a little bit on the, the people behind the Southern Ontario Water Consortium and particularly the people within the Water Institute and uh, the University of Waterloo that are playing such a key part in um, creating and building this project. And then third, hope you take away a message that we're, we really are building something new and different and we want you to be involved and hope this is of, of value to you. So what is this? Southern Ontario Water Consortium, SOWC. It really is uh, a platform. We use the word platform a lot, I certainly do. Uh, it's a platform for um, development and demonstration of water and wastewater technologies. It's a platform for research and development. Uh, it really is, uh, we're building a suite of facilities, we have multiple partners, collaborators, multiple areas of focus, but what's really unique about it uh, is the, the focus on integrating across all those different partners and different areas of focus that I hope to, to be able to convey today. Um, and as well, a focus, a really strong focus on collaboration. So again, we're building capacity for academic research, for some private sector demonstration and testing, but um, Critically, the intersect between those two where academic and private sector collaboration can, can take place. It has many parts. Uh, the whole is very much bigger than the sum of the parts. Um, and again, I thought I'd reinforce that by talking about some of the, the real people behind SLWC as I go through. Who is the SLWC? Well, initially, we have eight academic partners, eight partner universities in the project um, that were part of the uh, sort of proposal development and collaboration to, um, to, to plan and propose the Ontario Water Consortium. University of Waterloo is the lead institution, so um, uh, very much was the lead, played a lead role in, uh, again, uh, bringing those other universities together through that collaboration. And the Water Institute in particular really did, uh, to echo Bob's earlier comments, play an absolutely pivotal role in, again, managing that collaboration, keeping those other eight part universities uh, on board and keeping the project uh, on board through multiple iterations of different proposals to different funders over a number of years. So it all formally came together a little over a year ago in August 2011 when we had the, the commitment of our financial backers, which include the Government of Canada, the Federal Economic Development Agency for Southern Ontario, FedDev, the provincial government through um, the Ministry of Economic Development and Innovation, and IBM as our primary corporate sponsor. This just gives you a sense of um, sort of the, the overall footprint of the project and one of the main um, sort of um, frameworks for the integration across the different areas, which is the focus on the Grand River watershed. So this shows you uh, the different partner universities and the different facilities that are included, um, largely in the context of the Grand River, which is what the big green shape is in the middle of the slide, um, but also including the City of London and University of Western Ontario in the West, Oshawa, UOYT, and University of Toronto, Canadian Forces Base Borden, where there's, um, we're sort of uh, building on existing relationship there with the University of Waterloo for groundwater testing and te testing groundwater mediation technologies. But really the core of it is this, this sort of um, focus on the Grand River watershed context for all the work that we're sort of building and enabling. And the, the, the smaller yellow spots you can't really see very well, but they're the sub watersheds that are the, the core focus in the watershed. Um, Nobody I'll speak to in a minute, but Alder Creek and Hopewell Creek within the Grand, and then Mimico Creek in the um, in Toronto as a very urban watershed. So part of the reason, uh, and there's other folks here who can speak to this better than I. But part of the reason for the focus on the Grand, besides the the, the location of it, is the the context of an urbanizing watershed from emerging press, uh, pressures on a large watershed like the Grand where there's rapid urbanization and growth pressures and how do you manage water um, in, in that kind of urban watershed context. So I'm just going to speak uh, a little bit to each of the key areas of focus within the Southern Ontario Water Consortium. And in each case, um, each, we call them nodes, so I'm going to refer to the, the different nodes or research areas of focus within the consortium. Each one is led by a, a researcher from one of the partner universities, our node leader. Um, and part of their job is to um, work with 
other the other partner universities in that area. So uh, any, any of the other partner universities that, that have a research interest in that area, the node leader's job is partly to, to uh, sort of enable and facilitate the collaboration across those different universities. And then each of those you know, node leaders uh, are part of what we call the platform management committee, which is where they come together to help me manage across the consortium uh, the building and development and really look for areas of the sort of, uh, again, synergy across the different um, node areas of focus. So Drinking Water is led by Susan Andrews at University of Toronto. She works very closely here at University of Waterloo with Bill Anderson and Peter Huck uh, and others. And the, the unique capacity that SFWC is building with the Drinking Water node is to uh, enable and build um, mobile trailers to do drinking water um, R&D and testing of drinking water techniques in the field. Ecotoxicology the, is led by Dr. Deb McClatchy at Laurier, working closely with Glenn Vanderpack at University of Guelph as co-node leader, and Mark Servos here at University of Waterloo. Uh, and similarly, the, the, the uh, unique capacity that SWC is supporting in Ecotox is the, to enable it to build, again, mobile trailers to do testing in the field uh, around water quality effects and the effectiveness of different um, uh, treatment techniques as well on in-stream biota and fish. Analytical techniques, really this is, uh, so this is led by Mark Servos here at University of Waterloo with a number of other University of Waterloo researchers working closely with him. Really this is sort of enhancing and enabling a, a, a suite of analytical capacity that is very much integrated with the other areas of research and focus across the, across the platform. On the wastewater side, we're, we're building demonstration facilities right in existing municipal wastewater treatment plants. So in partnership with the City of Guelph and the City of London, we're essentially building um, facilities so that you can have access to different, um, different streams within the wastewater treatment process to do to test wastewater, um, 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 wastewater techniques or, or uh, uh, applications. In Guelph, it's sort of smaller scale flows, and London is right up to full municipal scale <coughs> flows, essentially, and have access to that kind of municipal wastewater for testing and demonstration. Again, in Guelph, it's uh, with Dr. Ed McBain, and in London, with Western, it's George Snapa is the lead there for, for the consortium. The watershed node, this is led by Dave Rudolph. Um, who, as Bob mentioned, has played a, a critical role, along with Jim Barker, actually, in the, in the conception, the inception and development of the consortium right from day one. He leads the watershed node for the platform, um, as well as the focus on the Alder Creek sub-watershed in particular. Uh, Jim Barker uh, is the lead for the CFP Gordon activities on groundwater remediation that I mentioned. Sherry Schiff's focus at University of Waterloo is the sort of overall brand context. Rich Patron at Laurier is focusing on the Hopewell sub-watershed that was on the map, and Carl Mitchell at U of T is focusing on the Mimical part of the map, um, the sub-watershed in Toronto at U of T. And the, the capacity in watersheds, again, I'll, I'll let Dave speak to this in more detail, folks are interested, but really it's uh, enabling the instrumentation of those sub-watersheds, so building the, the stations to do water quality monitoring, to do wireless sensing, to have smart watersheds that are triggered by environmental triggers on that sub-watershed basis, so really kind of building a, a smart, uh, a platform for smart watershed management. And Beth Parker at uh, the University of Guelph for uh, enhancing some of the groundwater research capacity there. Sensors um, is led by McMaster University, Jamal Dean. They're building a state-of-the-art nanotech sensor lab there. Um, and again, sensors is one of the areas that really uh, interconnects with the other areas of focus with, within SOWC to look at uh, sensing wireless distributed uh, sensing for, for water monitoring and management applications. And at University of Waterloo, Vasily Karanasios is also part of that sensors, um, sensors node. So again, that just gives you a really quick sense of sort of the, the key areas of focus, but this slide just demonstrates that our, our real interest is the, again, enhancing the, the capacity within each of those areas, enhancing the collaboration within each of those areas, 
but also critically um, looking at and enabling and enhancing the integration across these different areas uh, and collaboration there as well. And one of the ways that we um, do that, and, and again, kind of bring it back into the broader watershed context, is with the, the integrated data management, the IT platform that is the IBM investment in the project. So IBM's investment is essentially the, the supercomputing hardware and the software that makes up their smart water platform. We're essentially helping to pilot that smart water application on a watershed basis. So, so how do you build on um, the well, sub-watershed instrumentation that Dave is doing, build up on a platform with the other uh, data that exists on the Grand River, and how do you sort of roll that up into the potential for a, for a smart watershed application on, the, on the, the, the data IT platform side of things. So what does this all mean for you? How can you use the platform? Well, start with the question of what you need to do, essentially. We're, uh, and I should emphasize, we really are an active building mode for all of this. So the funding uh, is essentially for the, the capital to do the building, to acquire the equipment, and we're actively in that phase of putting those things in place and building it. All of that will be in place and fully functional for uh, April 2014, a little over a year from now. So we have been very heavily focused on the, on the, on the building and acquisition side of things, which is why there hasn't been a lot more word out there about what we're doing and, and how you can integrate and how you can use and work with us. Um, but really want to start that conversation. So open to uh, people's ideas about how they think this capacity, these kinds of facilities might be able to help or feed into your work or projects that you can uh, envision being facilitated on a consortium. Really happy to have that conversation with folks. Um, and to keep track of us, you can also sign up for our newsletter on our, on our website. We just sent one out today. So we're gonna, as we go, start to really try to get the word out more about what it is we're building, what we're planning to do, and how people might think about engagement. 